President Barack Obama's Secretary of State John Kerry making a big speech on the Middle East tomorrow. But what will happen in the region after Donald Trump takes office? Let's discuss now with Youssef Munir. He's executive director of the U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights. Also, attorney Alan Dershowitz. He is the author of The Case for Israel. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And it's going to be an interesting conversation. Alan, I'm going to start with you. Uh, as I said in the introduction, uh, Secretary of State John Kerry making an announcement tomorrow about this controversial U.N. resolution and about the Middle East uh, peace plan. Um, the U.S. didn't veto it, it abstained. So why do you think the Obama administration is taking these actions now? Well, first of all, I think it's fine for Secretary Kerry to make a proposal for peace. What was wrong was tying his successor's hands by having the United Nations Security Council take the issue and issue a very broad resolution which would make it illegal for Jews to pray at the Western Wall to send their children and Arab Israelis to Hebrew University or to treatment at Hadassah Hospital. It was too broad. It was a badly constructed resolution. But let us say Secretary question, how Kerry. How would it make it illegal to it would make it illegal to settle on the land? It wouldn't make it illegal to go there to visit. N no, to, a settlement to, means any building and for take for example if you're just Jewish you know, the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem. So the Jewish quarter had been inhabited by Jews for hundreds of years. The Jordanians captured it illegally during a genocidal war against Israel in 1948. Israel recaptured it after the Jordanians attacked Israel in 1967. The Jews moved back into their homes. The synagogues had been desecrated. The cemeteries were turned into I know urinals. where you're going with that, but no, no That's state. That's called a settlement. But no now. state recognizes that. The only, the, no state recognizes that. Well, as, that's up for negotiation, right. but and, the but, UN but it's should always been a negotiation. It. Jerusalem has always been under negotiation for a, a, a two party. That's right. But yeah. the UN shouldn't resolve it. It should be subject to negotiation. Yeah. Israel wants to offer land for peace, but if there's no land to offer, if the UN has already said this is illegal when it's subject to negotiation, it has concluded what should be concluded only after a negotiation. Go ahead, you said. Well, the legality of it is not subject to negotiation. In fact, you know, this is not controversial. Uh, the entire world, with the exception of Israel, and actually within Israel, it's the right wing in Israel that does not uh, There's agree no other with country this. that recognizes it's, it. Right. The, the, it's, it's one of the least controversial things in the world that settlements in occupied territory are illegal. And it's actually been, you know, well established U.S. policy. It's part of the Geneva Convention. Uh, it is part of the Geneva Conventions, and the United States has recognized as much, uh, not just this past week, but historically in many different resolutions. And where I would disagree very much with Alan is on this notion that somehow this is tying Donald Trump's hands. You know, there have been many resolutions like this in the past, which frankly, presidents have ignored when it comes to enforcement. There have been many resolutions uh, during the Obama administration. This is the only one that they have abstained from it, and the only one where they did not back Israel. The only time that the Obama administration has ever used its veto at the United Nations Security Council was to prevent a resolution criticizing settlements. Mm -hmm. And I think what you're seeing today, this hysteria in response from the Israelis, is an attempt really to exact costs on any elected officials in the future from ever deviating even an inch from the Netanyahu right-wing line. Well, ahead, first of now. all, there is no Israeli leader who believes that uh, Jewish Jerusalem, the Jewish Quarter of Jerusalem, Hebrew University, Hadassah Hospital, the Western Wall is illegally occupied. Nobody believes that. President Obama went to the Western Wall and prayed and put uh, uh, a prayer in it. Uh, up until now, it's always been believed that whatever the resolution is going to be, these areas will remain part of Israel. But now, Israel's negotiating position has been undercut by saying that this area has been unlawful. Now, who did Israel take it from? It didn't take it from the Palestinians. It took it from the Jordanians, from Jordanians. who had taken it from the Jews. Remember that the really Jews controlled. Matter. It doesn't it, matter. It matters a great deal. No, the Jews had really controlled those terms, areas. In terms of what and the then as the result. It doesn't matter, matter in terms of international law. Well, it doesn't international, matter in terms look, of the I'm the lawyer here. Let me tell you that international law is very, I understand very that's a, unclear. I understand that's a legal argument. But according to the United Nations and according to the Geneva Convention, well, according to the, the United argument Nations, that you're saying does not stand. According to the United Nations, Jews kill uh, babies and take their organs. The United Nations has rendered thousands of resolutions against Israel, most of them totally phony and based on phony facts. Nobody should take seriously what the United Nations ever says 
about Israel. The United Nations is a center for anti-Israel activities. Again, it's silent over Syria, response. but it has resolution over resolution. It's silent over Tibet. It's silent over the Let Ukraine. It's silent respond. over everything it's except not. Israel. So nobody should take the UN seriously at all on this Look, issue. Uh, Go ahead, you see. The Israelis have, for the past 50 years, been building these illegal settlements on occupied Palestinian territory. And the world has said to the Palestinians, be patient, eventually the Israelis will change. And if you were in a relationship with anybody and they had a bad habit for 50 years, let's say, you know, yelling over people during arguments or something, right? And they refuse to change. And someone said to you, look, just be patient, they'll change. Would you put up with that? It's not just the United Nations that has this posi uh, position. It's every country in the world that's speaking at the United Nations. But now let's the British, the, facts. the French, the Russians, the yeah. Americans, everybody around the world except Quickly for the right-wing so radical <laughs> fringe in Israel you know, believes that they need to stop colonizing Palestinian territory. So in There's 2000, a line. Which is Beyond Alan, which that is, line, okay. building is In 2000 is and 2001, so. Israel offered to end all settlements, end the occupation, give the Palestinians a state. Arafat said no and responded with an uh, intifada which killed 4,000 people. In 2008, Omer said to the Palestinian leadership, we'll give you even more. The Palestinians said no. When the Palestinians refuse decent offers from the Israelis, you can't put the blame on the Israelis. But it was the, it was the offer of the Israelis. It wasn't a mutual offer well, to be Only to one be side on. is and building settlements in right. the other side's territory. But, that, but and Israel that side, offered to stop and, the settlements. But it, it has never need actually UN. stopped. Yes, it has. There was for a settlement for East. It's there was, been building these there was settlements. a settlement, the way, according to the, the there was, according process, to the resolution, there was get a settlement for East for 10 months, and the, and the Palestinians right. refused to come to the bargaining table. Right. The, and the, I spoke with Dr. Ashwawi about that this morning. Don't she explained. want a Palestinian state. What they okay. want is there not to be a Jewish state. I want to play this because this is Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu accusing Americans of pushing this resolution mm -hmm. through. From the information that we have, we have no doubt that the Obama administration initiated it, stood behind it, coordinated on the wording, and demanded that it be passed. The administration denies categorically that it is behind the resolution. Mm -hmm. Listen. We reject the notion that the United States was the driving force behind this resolution. Uh, that's just not true. Uh, the United States did not draft uh, this resolution, nor did it put it forward. We also made clear uh, at every uh, conversation, in every conversation, uh, that the president would make the final decision and that he would have to review the final text before making his final decision. So the idea that this was, again, pre-cooked or that we had uh, agreed upon the text uh, weeks uh, in advance is just uh, not accurate. Mm -hmm. Do you view the actions of the United States here as a victory for the Palestinian cause, Yusuf? Look, this, this is not about a victory for Palestinians or victory uh, for Israelis. The United States, whether they're behind this or not behind this, should not have any reason to be ashamed at all for standing up for international law. It's something that they have stated for years now from bipartisan administrations that the entire world agrees on. This is not controversial. It's only a problem for one person. Benjamin Netanyahu, who staked his entire career on building in the right wing of Israeli politics. And he's vested, deeply vested in the settlement enterprise. What you're hearing from him today is all about him making sure he can stay in power. In fact, he reminds me of somebody that just got elected here in the United States. I, I'm, Alan, I want to play this for you. This is Ron Dermer. I spoke with him, the Israeli ambassador to the United States. Listen. What's the, what's the evidence that the United States was behind this gang? If I've, well, heard we that, have, I've heard that a lot. Yeah, we have clear evidence of it. We will present that evidence to the new administration through the appropriate channels. And if they want to share it with the why American not, people, why not present they're it welcome now to. When, when this like whole I said, we will present on. the evidence to the new administration. And if they want to share it with the American people, they're welcome to do it. So if you're making a charge like that, shouldn't you show the information while the person is in office to respond to it? or at least to embarrass them because they were actually behind it. If you actually do have the evidence, if they did, why wouldn't they just here, say, I have it, here's Mr. Obama, here it is. Here's right what's here. going to happen. They're going to give it over to congressional leaders. There are going to be hearings, and the truth will come out. Look, if the United States is not behind it, that shows even greater weakness. The United States should have been 
responsible for this. The whole idea that the United Perez States abdicates it, Perez responsibility. Perez is reporting on that it is even, England and New Zealand who's behind it. Well, but uh, the, there were meetings between uni uh, United States and New Zealand and meetings between the United States and Great Britain. The United States' hand is clearly in this. And this is revenge by Obama. This is not about Netanyahu because Netanyahu on this issue represents all of Israel. The entire Israeli government is against this resolution because it doesn't limit itself to building settlements in the West Bank. It also includes Jewish Jerusalem, which Yosef thinks is part of Palestine, but nobody in Israel thinks that, and nobody in America thinks that. This is not between America and Israel. Americans are not behind this resolution. 88 senators are against it. All of Congress is against it. Much of the Obama administration was against it. This is one man, Obama, and his cabinet against the Israeli there government. There were 14 countries who voted for it and... They'll uh, vote for the anything. US, There's the always US an automatic upset. majority. Yeah. If, if Algeria introduced a resolution that the earth was flattened, that Israel flattened it, it would win 143 to 26 with 14 abstentions. Got it. That's got it the way it goes in the UN. Quickly, if you can. I would just say what you're seeing now is an attempt by the Israelis. They, for a number of years, have been aligning themselves with the GOP, with the Republican Party. We I'm saw a liberal it. Democrat. We saw it. Well, you know, there's fewer and fewer people who are, are thinking and talking like you, uh, Alan, because the reality is uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and the so. Israel he represents, the values that he represents are looking less and less like the values that liberal Democrats continue to hold dear. And how come so many liberal Democrats are, are opposed to this resolution? Democrats in the United States Senate are opposed to this resolution. That's, this is bipartisan simply, opposition. That's there is almost news, nobody. Alan, Tell me somebody news. who supports it in the, you, in the, you, in the Senate. You, it, it, Tell me it, somebody it, who supports it's, it's, it in the look, Senate. Look, it's not about the Senate. You look at American public opinion on these issues. People Very do not support Israel settlement but enterprise. They do, they do not Jews want to praying see at the West Bank. This is not about Jews praying it at the West Bank. Then why did the resolution say that? There's a new Brookings. Resolution there's a Brookings does Institute. Does not say anything about Jews. There's a Brookings what Institute. Is, you can read the resolution. It's not and there. And this only is one about way to read it. international of Americans law and are Israel breaking international law. Yeah. Of course, they're against settlements. They're not against Jews praying at the Western Wall. They're because not against. Not, that's not what this resolution is about. It's what you want to make it about because you want to We're going around and around. We're going around and around. Violations of international law. Alan, I've read um, the resolution, it and it uh, doesn't say anything about Jews praying. Of course, what it says is any change since 67. And in 60, before 67, these areas were Judenrein. Jews were not allowed to pray at the Western World. Now they are. It's a but change. This, but this does, does Jews, not say that. Yes, it does. It doesn't say that. It says that any change since 1967. Right. That's what it means. I want Thank to ask the Obama mind. administration what they think it means. I've got Do they go. think it means that Jews can pray at the Western Wall or not? They haven't answered Thank that question. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>